Hello, and welcome to Mitchell Consulting's webinar series for our Mitchell University. Today we're going to be working with N4 Facts, and we're going to be talking about some of the setup that needs to be done in order to use the payroll module. Uh, this webinar is being recorded, and it will be available on our website, so you can visit us at www.mitchellgroup to view this, plus the others in our training series. Uh, today, for purpose of the demo, we're going to be using Facts 7.7 for our demo. And we're going to start by going through the infrequent file maintenance and some of the setup that's required in the payroll system. So let's begin. So we're going to go here to our payroll module. And we're going to go into file maintenance. And we're going to go into the infrequent file maintenance. And see here we have a lot of uh, information we're going to create. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create employee classes. Uh, this program allows the users in FACT system to create and maintain employee class records. Employee classes may be used to group employees uh, by type. So for example, you may have office, management, warehouse. You can also do it by location. For example, you may have the main office, branch, etc. Or by any other category you want to use. Many of the payroll reports can be printed by class. And this allows for comparison of data by employee classes. So here what we're going to do is we're going to show you some of the examples we got. And we're just going to go here. And you can see we have, in this case, a general and a management. And again, this is for the reporting purposes. So we just can set that up this way. Let's go back in here. I disconnected. Let's go back into our payroll. The next one would be the department file maintenance. This is similar uh, to the employee. <laughs> um, this program allows the users of the fact system to create and maintain department records. Each employee is assigned a department number. The department codes are used to group employees by department in which they work. For example, purchasing, shipping, payroll, accounts receivable, etc., or by any other category that you would want to set up. During the pay cycle, an employee may earn wages for multiple departments. Each department work and also they can set up for each department work and may also have assigned GL earning posting tables for earnings accounts. So what we can do here is we can go into our departments and again we can link these. So here we have wholesale and retail. We can link these to corresponding GL accounts uh, and posting tables. And again, this is, this is important for reporting purposes. We can see this in reporting by department as well. We can also go here if we exit. We can also look at the department history file maintenance. Again, this allows us to look. We can see here, again, if we need to make any adjustments, we can do it on a quarterly, period, or yearly basis. Again, we can look at the branch and we can look at the departments. So again, here, if we look at our wholesale, again, we can look at information. Again, if we need to edit this for whatever reason, we're going live in the beginning of a year, we need to uh, enter some information here, we can have the ability of making changes to the department history. So we can uh, maintain that, and we can make any changes to that if we want. The other one is really not set up that much as the check control file maintenance. And again, but um, what you can do here, is the check control file maintenance. It just allows you to set up the type of check you're using. So for example, if we search here, in this case we have a couple branches. So let's look at the uh, Bank of Atlanta. Again, we can set up here the voucher columns, the employee numbers. That, you know, So we have three-digit employee numbers, the name. And what we're doing here is we're just defining parameters on the check. So we can have maximum columns and so on on our check. This is good if we use different checks for, um, you know, let's say different banks or different departments and so on. We can actually go in here. We can set the size of how we want to see it and what we want to see on the actual screen. The next one is the earnings code file maintenance. And again here, what this program allows uh, you to do is you can set up types of wages paid to any hours worked by employees. 
All types of hours and wages must be defined in this program. Earnings may or may not be associated with the number of hours worked. Like, for example, wages paid independent of hours worked um, for mileage, travel reimbursement, bonuses, commissions, etc. Hourly wages may be for um, like regular pay, sick pay, vacation, overtime. Again, the user can determine the earnings associated with this. And again, this is good for reporting purposes because if you set this up, again, you can track information. So if you're looking here, we have, for example, say regular pay. So we have, again, our regular pay, and it's hourly. And again, if we have any premiums, and this is, this is regular pay. If we go back to uh, sick pay, again, we can set that up so we can determine vacation pay, and so on. We can have bonuses. Again, consulting. You notice that the consulting has no hours here, and there's no multiplier. You can have, say, holiday, which is hourly. And what we're doing, if somebody works a holiday, they're getting time and a half here. So they're getting 1.5, the multiplier, of what they would be. Same thing here. You know, again, you can set these up over time, time and a half. And again, this allows you to actually go into the system, create these earnings codes, and again, these are used during the payroll runs um, and also on the reporting. So the other one we have are the deduction code file maintenance. Okay, deductions are good. This program allows a user um, to define other taxes and other deductions withheld within the, uh, from your payroll checks. The system requires the entry of the following. You must have the FICA, you must have the federal, the state, and the local taxes. Two additional miscellaneous taxes may also be set up if needs. So other deductions, um, maybe employee purchases can be set up. Um, again, depending on how you set your payroll and what you offer, you can have this. So for example, in this case, we have a 401k deduction. We have employee advances. Again, we have credit unions. And then here's your federal. These must be set. This is the federal deduction. Again, for federal income tax. And you can see how it's being calculated. Okay. The FICA, and again, you have to have the FICA, the insurance, and these other ones you can set up. So you can go here and set these up. Like, for example, if we take out a 401k, and again, see, you can see the deduction type here. So, for example, if we look in the, in the different ones, again, you can see the information we have here. So that's nice. Again, we want to set those deductions up. Again, you want to have the standard uh, Fed and FICA deductions. But again, and what, you, what your company offers. If you offer um, 401k or insurance, again, you can set that up. The next one is the code sequence file maintenance. And again, this is just how things are going to be displayed and put out. Um, again, this program allows a user to determine the order in which the, the earnings code, the taxes, and the deductions appear on the screen and reports throughout the system. So again, I just have mine set up this way. So when I'm entering uh, my data, I'm first looking at the regular pay, and then I can enter, say, overtime, a vacation, again, sick pay, and so on. So again, that just ha allows me to set this up. So I can see on the screen when I'm entering my pay, again, all the information here. The other one's a workers' comp. Again, if you deal with workers' compensation, you need to have it set up. Um, again, this program is uh, set up to maintain the workers' compensation codes by tax district. Employees must pay federal and state governments uh, as required to compensate for any illness or injury, which is a direct result of workers' compensation. The system maintains the earnings by period of the workers' compensation once the processing begins. So again here, if you look, we have it by tax code. So if we go here, you can see we have, again, we have an office in Atlanta and an office in Dallas, so we can have this. And again, we can have, again, your workman's compensation code. And again, you can see all the earnings. And again, here would be the accounts we're using. So if we have to use that, so again, in this case, the workers' compensation is you're going to be getting 75% of their base salary, and these are the GL accounts they're going to. So again, something you want to set up um, within the system. The tax, dur dur dic the tax district information file maintenance. 
again, um, this program lets you maintain specific information regarding tax districts. Um, each federal, state, and local, and some miscellaneous and FICA tax districts must be set up in here. And again, this depends on your state and uh, you know wh where you're operating. Um, again, th there is normally one federal tax code, one code for each state in which the company has payroll, and one code for each local or miscellaneous payroll tax. The tax district codes are used in the first two characters of the tax code and the tax tables file maintenance. So for example, if we look here, you can see we have, again, GA for Georgia. And you can see that it's a state. And again, you can see here, again, the GL accounts we're using for posting, the unemployment uh, rate, and the wage ceiling rate. Again, this is set up. And a lot of this we set up with our, uh, with our, our clients. You know, we consult and we'll make sure this is all set up correctly. But again, that's what that is for. It allows me to go in and set the information up um, so we can make sure we have proper tax. The other one is the earnings GL table file maintenance. And again, if you've seen these with the other file maintenance tables or other uh, posting tables, this is what's really going to control all the GL accounts. So for example here, uh, this program allows the user uh, to create and maintain the earnings GL posting tables. So again, you can establish your different accounts, like so in this case, we're just using one salary account. But if we want to, we can have a GL account for regular salaries, a GL account for overtime, and so on. You can do it through here if you want to affect your general ledger, or you can leave the account. This is much cleaner than the general ledger because, again, I only have to look at the one salary account here. And then what I'm going to do is when I run my reports, because I've created the other codes, I can run my reports for regular overtime and do the pay this way. So again, it depends on how the user wants to set it up, but you can do it. You can go deep into the um, GL and have different GLs. Uh, you can have one GL account, but again, you can run the reports. The next one is the deductions. And again, this works the same as the tax GL table, but this is now our deduction table. So again, here, let's say, uh, let's look at here, the Georgia deductions. And again, this is uh, how you have it set up uh, with your states. But again, you can see, so for example, in the state of Georgia, here's our federal. And again, we have our GL account, our FICA, our federal, our state taxes payable, our local and miscellaneous. Again, remember, we're using a 401k, so we can have that. We have a credit union, and we have insurance. So these are those others types we set up originally, as we saw in the other tables. So again, 401k, you have your employee and employer. And again, very simple to set up. You would set this up, putting your GL account, how you want to post to General Ledger. The next one is the pay cycle file maintenance. And this we set up, again, depending on when we want to do it. Um, this program allows the user to enter and maintain information regarding the pay cycles. <clears throat> Uh, the users may want to set up many pay cycles as needed. Like for example, a company may have a weekly pay cycle for the hourly employees, maybe a semi-monthly or every two weeks for salary employees, a monthly, um, say, for commissions for salespeople, and a bonus. So what you can do is you can set these up in your cycles, <clears throat> and then you can run it. So in this case, you can see we have we have the weekly in Dallas, the weekly in Atlanta, and the biweekly. So again, if you're running payroll, say every Friday, um, every Friday you'll be running the weekly. Every other Friday you'll be running the weekly and the biweekly, and so on. At the end of the month, you'll run the monthly. Again, it determines how you want to set it up, but it gives you some flexibility in the system for your pay cycles. And that's important in, in the actual pay runs when you actually do the payroll period. OK, so let's go through here. This other stuff I'm just going to talk about, but we can actually do um, here uh, for the magnetic tape, the W-2s. And so what you can do here is you can create, in this case here, if you want to do electronic, uh, what we're doing is, again, we can set this up for transmitting the information. And what we're doing is doing electronic. 
So if you want to do W-2s electronically, you can do that. And again, you would transmit it to, the, to your bank uh, and enter all your information according to that. You would go here and put in your uh, who's getting the tape. So for example, where we're, sent, where we're sending it to, as well as here you de determine the boxes on a W-2. So we create our W-2s, and we can actually do our boxes. This can also be, could be printed within fax or electronically done this way. Typically, most of our clients will just print W-2s at the end of the year. And from there, we'll go in, like for example, if we go here, again, we can set this up and do it. The other one we see typically in our infrequent file maintenance is the static controls and the non-static controls. Again, static controls are something that we set up and we don't change hence the word static versus a non-static, which will be changing. So here, again, I set up in my static controls. You can see my bank. So again, and I'm using um, Bank 01 as my default bank, the First National Bank of Atlanta. And again, I'm telling facts how to behave. Um, I uh, use period GL distribution. I'm interfacing with uh, my general ledger. And again, if I want to use the period check registers, and the earnings and so on. So I can again set all this up. You're looking at my GL distributions here. Uh, I'm posting in detail. This is my posting GL using 4200 payroll and so on. Again, I'm running on a calendar, so my quarters are going to end on 3, 6, 9, 12 and my information here. So again, static controls are something that we set. Uh, once they're set, they maintain in the system. So we're typically not going to make any changes to these if we have to, you know, for whatever reason. But again, typically once you're set, we won't be going into those. The non-static control, again, non-static because this changes. We just set it up when we go live. So you can see right now is the current period. Again, you see from our other training sessions what we mean by uh, when we do posting. We talk about the current periods. So here we have where our current period is June of 2010. You can see we're in the third quarter, and the year is um, 2000. And again, here's the last update and the last check number. So again, this stuff we don't really have to set up. Normally, when we go live, we would have to set it up. So for example, if you're going to implement facts and you're going to start on April, you would have to put the current period and the last updates and so on. And then one set point, as you run, facts will take over as we do our end of periods and our end of months. And then this rebuild uh, files, and this is something that we use here in development. If there's any problems, any errors, we can use it to recalculate the files. And that's the infrequent files maintenance setup. Again, that's the key. The other one here under file maintenance is you have your employee file maintenance. And again, those fields that we created, you can now see here that how we can use these in the other fields. Because again, what we've done is we've, de we've determined in our infrequent file maintenance things like the, the departments, um, the employee classes, the earnings codes, okay, the, you know, all the information here. So now what we can do is we can set that up when we actually define our employees. So if we go here, and let's say we just pick this person here, and again, you can see all the information. So we have his name, uh, and again, we how we want to we reverse the name here. And again, that's just for reporting purposes. Again, we just want to do an alphabetical order by last name. We have, again, all the information, the address, the phone number, everything set up here. And again, you can see the part here. You can see the employee class. OK, we have a net management class. You can see that department, which is wholesale. Again, that workers comp code, and so on. So you have all the information here. And again, we can set it up this way. We set up the employee. The employee history file maintenance. Again, this is something that we normally don't need to go in all the time. But normally, when we set things up for the first time, we may have to use this. Uh, so let's here we have we have the option of the period, the quarter, and the year to date. So the period would be the month we're working in. So if we're into this month, that'd be the current period, and then the quarter would be whatever a quarter of the month in, and then the yearly totals. So for example, if I look at period and I call up that employee, Gregory, 
And again, I have to put my state. So let's just do F2. It's Malia to say he's in Georgia. And then my local here. So you can see in the period, again, the hours and the earnings. So you can see the regular hours. Again, those vacation hours, the difference is you can see the FICA, the employee match, and all the information here. Okay, and that was, you saw that in the set of how we set all that up. So that's how it's determining all this information. Again, if we have to make changes, we can do it. And again, that's the period. And so if we were to go back, and let's say we do the quarter, and let's pick uh, Gregory again. So now you can see the quarter to date information. You can see how it's greater here. And if we do the year, we're looking at the year to date. And again, you can see the year to date information. So again, this is something that you normally don't really need to go into, but um, it's done on a couple things. Typically, uh, depending on um, if we're going to start payroll, let's say in the middle of the year before the end, we need to enter this information. Um, we need it for our W-2s at the end of the year. So what we would do is if we're going to go live, let's say, um, on July 1st, or like, you know, let's say uh, August 1st. Then what we need to do is we have to enter the current period. Um, let's say July is the current period. So we enter July for the current period, and we have to enter the information. And then we have to enter the quarter and then the year to date at that point. So when we go live, we have to set that up. Then once we start running our payroll, what FAX is going to do is going to maintain these records, maintain these uh, balances for reports, and most important, at the end of the year for the W-2s. Again, that's all critical to, uh, to set that up. But again, typically it's, a, it's set up um, so you don't really have to go in each time and do it. Only if, there's a, only if there is a problem with the payroll, you can do it. And again, you have that's the employee history, and you have the period history. Again, difference being is this is the actual current period we're in. So if checks were run and there was an issue, something was incorrectly, again, you can see the current period here. We're in this period right here. Or we can enter the period. So if we, uh, again, choose our information, similar to the other screen we saw. And again, we'd have to make our information and make any of our changes in here if needed. And so on. You can see the concept of these. Again, the infrequent file maintenance is more to set up. This one here, the employee, a maximum hours file maintenance. Um, this program allows you to, uh, to create and maintain records of the employee's maximum hours available in a file. Um, this file can be used to store employees available uh, yearly, say, sick time, vacation time, personal, et cetera. So what you're doing is you're looking at these hours. You go in here. And again, this is something that may get cleared at the end of the year. So in this case, this employee is allowed 80 hours of sick time and 80 hours of vacation. This is important, too, because how you set it up. Because again, if you're going to do this kind of stuff, it's nice. You saw in the other ones, we have our different payroll our earnings categories. So we had our regular uh, earnings, and then we had our um, vacation, sick pay, and so on. So if you were going to run and someone took a day off, what you would do is entering their payroll, you would put 32 hours against the regular and eight hours against the vacation. And what this will do, this will track. So this person has everything. And at the end of the year, we can see what's left. Again, it's good for reference purposes. That way you don't have any issues you know, with an employee saying that he used up, he didn't use up all the vacation when he did. Again, reporting purposes, you can track all the, vac all the information. The unemployment history, again, like the other ones you see here, you have, uh, again, the period, quarter, and year to date. Again, what this program does is to maintain the unemployment history for a period, for the yearly or quarterly, and the corresponding tax distribution in employees. So if we look here, for example, let's just say quarterly. Again, let's look at our tax district. Stay with Georgia. And again, our employee, 
And again, you're looking at information. And again, this is all being calculated by the system, by fax when you're running payroll, but if you need to make any changes to it. And again, if you need to change this, all you have to do is we want to, let's say, change line four and five. We would just enter line four. And again, we would make our change and so on, and we would continue out. Again, if we need to do that, um, but this, these changes should not only be made without consulting, uh, Mitchell Consulting, because we want to make sure that we don't have any changes, which is going to cause problems at the end of the year. Same with the check history file. Again, these are all the historical files. Now we're actually doing it by check. Again, what it does is every time we print the check, we have the information, so we can look, let's say, at Gregory again, uh, we can look at a check date and a check number. You can see here, there's the check date. There's the check number. Again, it was a regular check. Here's the amount. There's that pay cycle we set. So remember, this person is getting paid biweekly. And again, you can look at 80 hours. He's getting paid every two weeks, 40 hours a week. And again, if we need to edit this specific check, again, keep in mind that this stuff should be not, you know, users should not really have authorizations to this. It should be um, not allowed to go in and make any changes. If changes are made, um, something happens in a payroll run, uh, file gets damaged, it's best to consult us. And what we do is we will work with you to actually get these balances back into place. So your average person should not really be going in here to making these changes. But again, you have the ability of doing it if need be. And then here you have the last one is the tax table file maintenance. And again, just like you saw the other ones, these are all your tables. So let's look at federal married. And again, there's all your information. So these are your brackets. This is something that we will actually work with our um, clients who are using the payroll. This is something that needs to be updated on a yearly basis. Typically what happens is at the end of the year, if there's any changes by the IRS, and we will get these tables and we would normally send it to our clients to just go in because we would have to change these this bracket information here and these deductions depending on how the IRS makes any changes. Okay, so let's recap what we went over today. We went over the beginning of payroll. And by the way, we're going to be doing webinars on the whole thing for payroll. So we'll do one on the check preparation, the check writing, and so on. Today we focused on the file maintenance. And first of all, we talked about the in and file maintenance. Again, these are things we need to set up. You have to have at least one. You don't have to have you know set many, but you have to have at least one. So again, the employee class, you want to have your employees, maybe officers, um, administrators, warehouse, and so on. Uh, you can have your department. Again, if you want to have the warehouse is a department, maybe uh, location, Atlanta is a department, Dallas is a department. Here you can go and look at your department history, so you can make changes to that. Your check print control, again, if you want to have different things on the check, how the check's going to print, and the order in which things are going to check, and formatting, you can set that up. Your earnings code, again, we talked about this one. Uh, these are the different types of earnings that you can define, as well as the general ledger accounts. So in this case, we would have, let's say, regular salary, sick time, vacation time, and so on. Same with your deductions. Here you create all your deductions. You're typically going to have your Fed and FICA, uh, any state deductions, and, and any other deductions that the company offers. You have a 401k. Employees can contribute to it. You can have a 401k deduction. Maybe if they purchase, you have an account where they can deduct purchases and so on. Here is the code sequence, and again, this is just how they're laid out. So again, you're looking at both the earnings and the deductions. So this is how we lay it out. So we look and we actually go to enter our payroll. We just want to have regular pay first, then overtime, then vacation, and so on. Our deductions, we're always going to have the Fed, FICA, okay, state and local, depending on your jurisdictions. We have some miscellaneous, and then these are my other deductions. In this case, we take out a 401k, a credit union, insurance, dental, and so on. So again, that's something that you can set up. And the rest kind of hold true the same way. Workers' compensation codes, you can set up your codes for workers' comp. And again, these are used in the payroll system when entering, uh, as well as all our reporting. So we can report by that. Your tax uh, district information, again, 
your earnings GL and your deductions, these are the links to the uh, general ledger. So you can see here we created those earnings codes for the regular pay and vacation and the deductions for the 401k. And again, this is where they're going to post. So we can create different posting tables. So again, here we can have our regular salary over time. And again, you can keep one account or change the accounts here. Same holds true for the deductions. And again, your federal taxes, state, and so on. And then this is your other information. Again, these are just the GL accounts. So when you post on a weekly, when you do your payroll run, you know, FAX knows where to post and what GL accounts to hit. Your uh, pay cycle file maintenance, this is good. Again, if you just do different payrolls, uh, if everybody's paid weekly, you only have to create one. But again, some companies, what they do is they typically, let's say, some clerical or warehouse people get paid once a week. They may have some management um, that get paid biweekly, and maybe offices get paid uh, once a month, or commission checks are done once a month, and so on. So you can set that up. The other is related to the W-2. Again, at the end of the year, and we'll go through this in, uh, in detail in our webinars at the end of the period, but at the end of the year, you've got to print your W-2s. You can either print them, or you can electronically set them up by using the W-2 magnetic tape information here. We have our static controls. Again, like you saw in the other modules, static controls are something that we set and don't change. And again, this is kind of what bank we're going to use if we're interfaced with the general ledger, if we're going to post in detail, if we're using job costing, and all that's kind of set up in the system. And the non-static controls, again, are just normally set up when you do go live, and they're just maintained by the system. <clears throat> this is keeping track of the current period, uh, what quarter you're in, what year you're in, and again, the last updates and last registers and so on. OK, so that concludes our webinar today. Um, to recap, we went over, in fact, the payroll module, the setup, the file maintenance, including the infrequent file maintenance, as well as the regular file maintenance you know, for the employee information here and so on. Like we said, this webinar is being recorded. It will be available on our website. So you can visit us at www.michelgroup.com to view this as well as the others in our series. And once again, we thank you for your time.